The reason you may be struggling in life is because you continue to accept your beliefs rather than take a second to question if they are serving you. The longer you tolerate your negative beliefs, the longer you will stay stuck. Every single time you double down on a certain belief or a negative label or a thought process, it forms your reality. Your reality is constantly forming your identity. That is a fact. Let's say it again. The longer you tolerate your negative behavior, it is forming your reality. Your reality is forming your identity. Today, we are going to learn that it is safe to question ourselves. Questioning brings change. Vision demands change. That is what winter arc is all about. Getting down, putting ourselves away for a little bit. You know, winter months is kind of like bring out the scarves, bring out the sweatsuits. Let's like get warm. Let's reinvent, reevaluate what has been working, what has not. And that is why I'm loving this whole winter arc series because it's a time to discover ourselves. And why not discover ourselves before we launch into 2025? I have already set in stone some things that have been negative in my belief system that I just really questioned myself about. Like, I'm like, no more of that. That is lazy thinking. That is negative thinking. That is self-harm. And every single one of us can end up in that messy thinking. But today, we are going to learn that it is okay to question our beliefs and change them. Question what we're thinking about all areas of our life. Question how we're thinking about our, que our careers. Question how we are thinking about our careers. Question your thoughts in your marriage, with your spouse, with your partner. Or are you looking for that mate? Question your beliefs in your parenting. Question your beliefs as you identify with yourself mentally and physically. There is a lot of negative beliefs and there are a lot of lies that are spoken to our mind. So if you're excited about today's lesson, keep watching because at the end of the lesson, you're going to get a really cool homework tip that I do when I close out a lot of times my quarterly review. So stay tuned. I know you're going to love it. the future holds, future holds, nobody knows till the race is so on. So if you're wondering what's the point, what's the point of anything? To live your life, live your life, live it right now Cause you only get one Before the dawn Alright, before we get into the three steps of reorganizing your belief systems Because there is an identity you need to latch on to We're going to talk all about that It is so good, it is so transforming But before we jump into that, it's just a reminder that you can head over to HeatherDaxter.com Right at the top in my pages, you will notice free journal. That is the free download of this 30 day discover yourself series. It's so nice. And I will tell you the cover of the book is frameable. It's something that would look so cute in your office to remind you that you are on a journey. You are on an adventure of faith. You are on an adventure to discover your best self. And that is our winter arc. We all need this time. And I thought, why not really set 30 days up prior to jumping into 2025 because then you are going to learn some tips and tricks and some huge promises that you have to latch on that your belief system has to latch onto so that you can really understand your dreams and visions when we go full force in 2025. So don't forget to head over there, grab that free download, a present from me to you because I'm so thankful for you. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button. Hitting the subscribe button here helps this channel so much and I truly appreciate it. The work, the editing that goes into this, that is just a blessing back from you and it is so much appreciated. It really gathers up our community. And speaking of community, be sure to head over to, if you're a Facebook person, head over to HB Women's Ministry. That is our faith community where people all over the world come together and we kind of talk about whatever lesson we're on, whatever season we're in, and just so much more going on there. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget that there's a beautiful messy show, which is the podcast that has so many great messages. If you're driving and just needing to be encouraged in the word, be sure to check that out as well. I just wanted to share some other social platforms out there that you can get connected with either I or other people that are like minded in this community. All right, so let's do life together by talking about our identity. Today's discover yourself verse is yes, I'm going to say verse because everything here on this channel is faith-based. I believe that God has created you in a specific way. And when we attach our beliefs into that faith system, you are going to see something exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you can ask, think, or imagine happen 
in every area of your life wheel. So today's verse is, we'll take a look right here on the handout in your journals. It's coming from Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. <sighs> Do you see that? Our identity already is in Christ. So, so let's take this and break this down in three steps. Number one, embrace your identity. What does that mean? So the key is, is understanding what God said here in this word. He is saying that you are God's handiwork. You were created with a plan. You were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Your identity is supposed to be in Christ. This, my friend, is a deeply personal transformative journey. Sometimes ladies are just getting in their arc to understand their spiritual identity and that is it. You may be here for the first time on my channel or you could be returning. We are always taking our spiritual part of our life wheel from glory to glory. We're always working on ourselves. This is where it all starts. It involves you aligning your life with the faith. And everybody will say, well, that's not my faith. I have this faith. I have this faith. All these categories and definitions of faith. That is where truly the human argument begins. I for sure am not here to argue or dispute who is right and who is wrong. What I want to share with you is what I know and what I have seen in my personal life and in my faith journey. The more that I learn to align my life in faith through Jesus Christ, the more that I experienced peace, blessing, favor, and abundant life. That is up to you to discover. I Nobody can force you to say, believe in what I believe in. It becomes your personal journey. And the more that you experience God, the more that you will realize he is the only one, the only real person, the only real God where you are going to see a new life, experience transformation, whether it's in your marriage, in your career, with a child. Those prayers are heard. You, my sister, have been created in Christ Jesus. If you're struggling with that means I'd stop right there right there in discovering our identity. Maybe just sit down and write a note out to God if it's your first time or write some questions out that you're struggling in. A lot of times we're struggling in our identity in other areas of our lives. We're struggling in something mental, struggling in phys physical labels or identities or thought processes that we have. We're struggling in our marriage and that is because it's tapped into love. How other people love us, how we've responded to love. And when we look around, and believe in only what we know. It's hard for us to step away and put trust in a belief system in Christ. But I want you to know today, sister, you can create this and you can try this on. Be willing to explore in your spiritual area and know who you are in Christ. It changes the trajectory of your entire life. I can only share this because I've experienced it. I have come past it and I've seen the hand of God work. Which brings me to number two, your belief system affects every area of your life. So going back to number one, embracing your identity. It is so important to understand where your power is coming from and what power is real. What is real behind every faith, behind every religion? And that becomes your journey to discover that. I went on the same journey. I wanted to know in my knower what was real. And God has a way to show himself strong onto you just ask. So again, maybe you're on that part of your life wheel and you're stepping in prior to 2025 in your winter arc and you're going to say, there are some things I'm questioning in the spiritual life. What am I believing? What am I beholding? When I say your belief system affects every area of your life, how do you believe that you are loved? No one can love you and show his love strong onto you more than Jesus Christ. So if your belief affects every area of your life, God's love is the one that's first going to touch your soul because it's a healthy love. It's a safe love. It's a love that you can trust in. And how do you know that? By growing in that love, by doing online studies here that I offer you, uh, events, workshops, all of those things help you understand what God is doing in your life and how he is exposing his love personally to you. If your belief system affects every single part of your life, if you believe again, in the power of Jesus Christ, do you want to know what's happening? You're empowered by the Holy Spirit. So you're going to see that your beliefs are now empowered. It's almost like they have a generator behind them and you're going to see things that go out into the world, dreams that go out there, visions that go out there, and God begins to put something together. Something is empowered. Something is finally moving. And that, my sisters, is what helped me really realize I am connected 
to the right belief system. I am connected in my savior. I have a plan and it was prepared in advance for you. Yes, I may have went out in the wilderness for a while and ran around that mountain 40 sometimes because I was trying to explore and figure it out. But when I finally touched in to the right belief system and truly acknowledged Jesus Christ, I was empowered in such a personal way, a way that saved my marriage, a way that saved me mentally and emotionally, a way that saved me in my parenting ages. It always saved and rescued. I always felt love. I always felt empowered. I always had a place to retreat back to that would help me trust in the process. How do we believe? How do we believe? That's the last thing I want to talk to you about. You believe by remembering that you are chosen, that you are set apart, that you are loved, and that God is always up to doing a new thing in your life. When I go and I sit down and I write my visions out for the year, I'm believing God to do the next thing in me. For me to see that and believe in myself that that is God's handiwork. I am seeing something new. I am feeling good. I am feeling refreshed. I feel a focus. I sense a purpose. So believing in yourself is a process. It says in our notes, it's a process that involves a combination of faith and understanding your identity in Christ and actively engaging with God's words and promises. And in your notes and in your journal, I left you with here are three key principles that will cultivate your growth in your identity. And we talked about it. The first one being embracing that identity, embracing that identity. Go figure it out. Go on an adventure with that. The second thing we talked about was how your belief affects every area of your life. And so how are you believing? One thing that I do when I'm practicing how I believe is I remind myself that I am loved, I am chosen, and I am new. I also do a lot of gratitude. I think it's important to look back and see what God has done in your identity because you're always going from glory to glory, which is from new to new. Every new year, I can sit back and go, wow, Look what happened there in my career. Look what happened in my marriage. Look what happened with that child that I've been praying for years for. Honor the seasons where you struggled with forgiveness and you came to a resolving moment with yourself. You are identifying with the idea that I am forgiven. It is okay. I will let that go. Sometimes we hold on to stuff and we trap ourselves in a label of shame. Record all of those opportunities. Record all of those wins. Those gratitudes, which by the way, we talked about in yesterday's uh, video. You're going to want to check out it. I'll leave it. I'll leave it in the notes below. But yesterday's video was all about gratitude. How do I personally do gratitudes? That's all in there. But capturing your wins, recording different parts that you've struggled with in your belief system, and then recording how Christ came and proved himself strong onto you. If you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, you close a chapter and there's a new chapter. You close a chapter and there's a new chapter. Look at the new chapters. Look at the things that you closed. We can never outgrow our identity in Christ. It's always growing. And when it's growing, something that has been rooted in bitterness, rooted in shame, rooted in anger, will, the more that you study and learn about God's word, the more that identity changes out and then you begin to see your purpose behind what you struggled with. All right, I hope those little pointers helped you in understanding that your belief system forms your identity. Your identity forms your reality. The power of God's word and having faith in him and what you believe, what you behold, is really truly what you become. And that is the motto here in this woman's empowerment faith ministry is to believe, behold, and become all God's created you to be in whatever season in life, in whatever season of life. And I will go to extreme to encourage you and coach you in your self-identity. It all starts with your faith. So in closing out today, I have a little homework for you. I'd love for you to take a piece of paper, any piece of paper. Now, if you have your dream and explore journals, you have these beautiful babies right here. You have several pages in here, which by the way, don't forget the new one's going to be coming soon, but you have all kinds of pages for quarter four where you can really be examining your belief system. If you do not have the workbook, try what I'm going to share with you right now and implement this. So whether you want to implement this in your personal journal or you want to implement it on a piece of paper, I want you to picture, I want you to picture your life wheel. Life wheel looks like this. You have all the pies, which represents the category of your life. Remember, the hubcap is our belief system. We want all things to be moving and the momentum and the empowerment and the purpose and our identity in the peace, the blessing, the favor, all moving forward together. That's hard. That's hard to achieve sometimes in this messy world with messy characters and sin all around us, but it can be because that that's who God's going to empower us to be on the side of heaven. So what I want you to do is take a piece of paper. I want you to take all your current beliefs in each part of your life wheel, 
What is your current beliefs right now that you are saying to yourself in your career? What are your current beliefs? And be honest with yourself. What are your current beliefs that you are saying to yourself right now in your marriage? Or if you're in a single life, what are you saying to yourself? What is your identity? Wow. That, you know, that is where you're going to take a sticky note. And the mirror that you look on, look in every morning is going to have your identity in Christ, that you have a purpose. You have a reason to get up. God has a plan for you. He has prepared you in Christ Jesus, which means he has empowered you. You are highly favored. All of those negative behaviors for each area is the struggle, right? It's the valley you're in. And we all have them. Now draw a line. And on the other side, I want you to take a minute and I want you to Google. Yup. I want you to go on your phone, whatever. And I want you to Google. Say you're struggling with shame. What is the opposite of shame in faith? What is God telling me in faith with the word shame? What is God telling me in faith with the word forgiveness? What is my identity in faith with the word forgiveness? Start, start putting all these sentences in and watch what Google throws back at you. Google's going to throw back what God's word says or something that you need to identify with. There's going to be a polar opposite. Write that down and begin to affirm yourself in that and see that you are loved through that word, that you can trust in that word and that you will become new in that word. Now, the last step is pick an action step. Pick an action step. Let's say that you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you are struggling emotionally or mentally with the area of forgiveness with the area of forgiveness, and you Google that and you find out that God says that there is no shame in your youth, but he has crowned you with a crown of glory. He has a plan. There is a beauty in those ashes. And you can find all that in the book of Isaiah. It's actually a powerful book that brought so much healing to me in my past area of life in a season that I was just stuck in and I couldn't get out of my past identity. When I began to write that down and take one action step, what can the action step be? It might be to wake up and say, I have no shame in Christ. My story and my actions from the past may have brought that on me, but I am no longer walking in that. I'm in a new chapter. I'm getting away from that. I am rooted now in Christ. There is a line in the sand, which by the way, that lesson is coming up, drawing lines in your sand, putting boundaries. Sometimes we have to put boundaries on ourselves in the way that we think so we can identify and line up with what God's word says. So how are you going to shift away from what's on the left-hand side of your paper? So whatever word's there, put an action step in. Maybe it's going to be, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to start with prayer. The action is going to be, I'm going to pray about this area of unforgiveness that I have in this person, or I'm going to pray for this area of hurt or guilt, or I'm going to pray about my low self-esteem in this area. I'm going to pray about the anger that I have with why God is allowing this to happen. Maybe there's, there's just different things. Maybe you're stuck on really identifying with Christ because you're angry for something that God did not do. And it's the lack of our wisdom and who God is. Maybe God's opening you up just to study more of how great his, his love is so that you can trust in that. And the more that you trust in that, you will identify in that truth, which then changes your entire identity, which changes your marriage, your career, your purpose, your gifting, your calling, everything that you've been predestined to do. Do you see how the enemy is going to trip you up to stay in limiting beliefs? So take time and map out, map out your thought process and how you're identifying with yourself and what does that look like according to God's word. It's really interesting. I do that every quarter. I tend to really sit back and go, why have I not been accomplishing that? And it's interesting. If you sit quiet, the spirit will bring something in your spirit and you'll hear something. You'll sense something. It may be a word. Write that down. Sit in it and say, have I been lining up my identity to that belief? And a lot of times you can step away and go, I really have. I have to get out of this. But wait, who am I in Christ? I'm empowered. I'm new. I'm loved. He is going to give me exactly what I need. I have stepped out in believing that. I have gotten lazy. I have not plugged in. So sisters, I pray today's lesson was a beauty for you. Get back in that art. I don't care. Get your tea, get your coffee, get your warm blankets, get your slippers out, get your favorite sweatsuit out, get your corner, get your lights on, but get in your ark and discover yourself and really focus on who are you identifying in? What does your belief system look like? All right, sisters, I love you. Be blessed. And I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye.